Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley and we're so glad you could join us today. We have Carl Adrian, who's the head of TRIDEC, the Tri-City Economic Development Council. We're so glad you're here today. Thank nice you to be for here. joining yeah. us. You are doing so much to help the economy in the Tri-Cities. Maybe you could start by showing us some of the highlights of the things you're working on right now. Well, you know, a lot of times people think that TRIDEC is just focused on Hanford and when our real mission is to diversify the economy. So we're out on a regular basis talking to corporate executives about the advantages of doing business in the Tri-Cities and in Washington State in general. But, um, you know, just uh, later this fall, we're going to be sponsoring an event for probably 150 corporate real estate executives uh, that, that will give us an opportunity to kind of showcase the Tri-Cities uh, and talk to them. And it's companies like 3M and Caterpillar Tractor and, and large companies that we, we have an opportunity to network with. We've got a group of local partners, again, later this fall that are going to be sharing a trade show booth at another uh, uh, exposition event for corporate real estate executives. So there's a lot going on to try to bring new companies to the community and diversify the economy. Well, yes, with some of the, the Hanford site shrinking down, there's great opportunity for growth. I've heard there's talk about quite a bit of housing development that might be out around the, the Southridge area and some, there is some a, other economic development <clears throat> happening in the Kennewick area. The, the city is growing. Yeah, the city of Kennewick actually through a, a change in some legislation during the, the past legislative session is, is going to be expanding south of Interstate 82 and uh, that will create a, a new area for industrial growth in Kennewick, which they really haven't had for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Of course, Richland has got the area north towards the Hanford site that's available for industrial development and Pasco has historically had their processing center which is a food processing uh, uh, area that uh, companies can locate in. Uh, one of the new reports I was looking at was showing that more and more retired people are choosing to live here which helps diversify because it will require more services for yeah. our area too. It, that's hard to track to tell you the truth. I, we hear a lot of antidotal information about retirees coming because the cost of living is, is favorable the weather is pretty mild and that sort of thing, but but it's hard to really track if it's if it's real numbers of people or it's just ones and twos and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you work with people throughout the region and work statewide to connect with the other economic development councils. We do. We have a network of, we're designated by the state as an associate development organization. There's one in every county and so we have Benton and Franklin counties, but Yakima County, for example, has one and all the counties in the state. So so we work collaboratively on, on a variety of things. Uh, for years we'd go to, several of us would go to trade shows uh, to represent the state uh, okay. because the state budget just wouldn't support. Uh, uh, being out marketing the state and so a number of the local communities banded together to do those kinds of things. One of your projects that you've had in the works for some time now is your Mid-Columbia Energy Initiative. That's right and actually that started out um, uh, because the Department of Energy said they were going to shrink the Hanford footprint and so we started talking about energy parks but what's really happened is it's it's really grown from being focused geographically to a, an area-wide initiative to grow the energy sector of the local economy and in when I talk about growing the energy sector, I'm not talking about, well, let's just generate more electricity or, or maybe not produce biofuels or something, but it's, it's really how do we attract manufacturers that are manufacturing equipment used in energy production. So maybe it's the manufacturer of a transformer or some sort of motor or something like that. And we believe that'll have a bigger bang for the buck than maybe just generating more electrons. Um, you know, a couple things that have come out of that. One was just recently reported on in the local media, and that was uh, energy storage, which has become mm -hmm. a huge issue in the Northwest uh, because of all the intermittent wind we have here. <laughs> oh, yes, um, we do. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the uh, Benton PUD, Franklin PUD, and the city of Richland uh, have, have joined as part of a uh, smart grid demonstration demonstration project that's being led by Pacific Northwest National Lab and Battelle and they've purchased uh, energy storage devices uh, basically big batteries and they're going to be charging those batteries when the wind is blowing and discharging the batteries when the wind is not blowing and the real technology is that they need to get a signal that says electricity is cheap and, and charge the battery and so so that's going on and that actually was an outgrowth of this Mid-Columbia Energy Initiative. Oh, congratulations. One of the, yeah, one of the other things that's going on is, is there's a lot of buzz right now about small modular reactors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, 
there are, well, actually DOE is um, about to award a couple contracts for mm -hmm. two different designs of reactors. And what we've said to the Department of Energy is we think we have the best site for whichever whichever design they select. But but because we have an operating nuclear reactor in Columbia Generating Station, mm -hmm. because there's been pre-permitting on the site right. uh, that puts us ahead of other sites, uh, we believe this would not only be the cheapest place to put one, but we also, it's the only place where the Department of Energy actually needs additional electricity right. uh, in the future. And so, so we've been uh, working hard and, and garnering political support to be the location for one of those first-of-a-kind small modular reactors. Actors. Yes, and if that was placed at an Energy Northwest and then could feed into Battelle and could feed out to the big plant and other places at Hanford, then it could also make other contributions in the fact that that's one of the big white hopes that's out there as far as development in the country. Yeah. People want to start putting those reactors in different places around the country and there isn't a lot out there looking like new construction, that's, new business outside of the pipeline that's on the radar, yeah. and so that has great promise. I think what, what we see, and, and the end game for us, though, is not just having a reactor here, but it's becoming the location for manufacturing these modular reactors. Right. You know, the, the smallest reactor design right now will fit on three semi-trucks and can be shipped, exported, whatever. And and so depending on the market, obviously, and how many of these are, are in demand, we want to be the location where they're manufactured. And so that could happen any place in the tri city and, and use workers from anywhere in the Tri-Cities, but we think that, that that has a promising future. And so that's really what we're after. Absolutely, because when that happens, you have a very good argument that you've got more PhDs per capita than any other community right. this size in the country. You have people that are already familiar with doing nuclear work, and so it would make a logical argument to base your business where you've got yeah. the skilled, qualified of people course. to do that kind yeah. of construction. Absolutely. And then uh, TerraPower, Bill Gates, uh, came and borrowed from some of the crowd here to take to Bellevue to work on his think tank, and he's doing a different type of reactor over in China, and we're hoping to tap into that a little yeah. bit as well. And I, I'm not technical, so I don't know exactly what kind of reactor it is, but it's a, it's a new design, completely new design. Uh, I think very, perhaps has some properties like FFTF, the fast flux test facility that was at Hanford, but, but he actually is, uh, TerraPower is actually doing work or doing business with several local companies who are helping support that effort from an engineering standpoint. And so, you know, we've talked to TerraPower about doing more work in the Tri-Cities uh, with some of our local business. Yes, I know they're working with their connections with Gary Locke over in China, and they've also been talking yeah. to the Koreans about their reactor. Their reactor design is not approved by the NRC to, for use Correct. in this country at this point, but still the concept that you could really do some building with those things yeah. and make the components that yeah. we, you could ship to Asia and kind of reverse the trend that's been going the other way for a yeah. long time and, could be very beneficial. And clearly we have the the skill and technical talent to, to help finish that design and, and make it a successful project for Mr. Gates. All right, Carl, it's just been a pleasure. I'm so glad you could come here. Good to see Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. We'll look forward to having you back again. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for joining Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.